see the difference in the mountains here. The roads are very narrow in the Vosges, and this is Laurent Fignon now. Now, this little group has got away on the climb, and Laurent Fignon, four riders here at the moment. Vargas is still here, and Rondon is with Fignon, so the Gatorade boy have two riders in the lead. And I just try to catch a glimpse of that class rider who's come up with them there. But it looks to me as though it might be Gonzalez who's come up there. Arsenio Gonzalez it is. So this is an interesting little group now. Laurent Fignon on the attack. That's something we haven't seen for a long time. Winner of the Tour de France in 1983 and 1984 when he was the master of the individual time trial and still stinging from that six minutes capture by Miguel Indurain in the time trial at Luxembourg this year. But there's no doubt that Fignon has been inspired on this climb of the Gambolon because at the back of this little group now is Dmitry Konishev. So they've picked him up. And it's a very good ride being done here by the class Spaniard, Arsenio Gonzalez. But look at the rhythm being tapped out on the slopes here of the Grand Boulogne, and that's why Fignon has gone clear. Fignon now is free as a bird on the climb of the Grand Boulogne. Well, there's still some 50 kilometers to go once he's over the top of this big climb, but that banner surely is inspiration now to the Frenchman. I can't remember Laurent Fignon riding such an aggressive stage as this for years. And he's doing it now on his new team of Gatorade, three as a bird. Well, this is a great ride by Fignon. He was 14th overall this morning, seven minutes, 54 seconds back. And now he's pulling time back on all of his rivals. Not too far behind on the slopes of the Grand Ballon. They're gonna have to chase him down as they go over the top because once he hits the high spot here over the top of the climb, this climb bringing Fignon up to 1,424 meters. It's being climbed today for only the fifth time in tour history. We go back to 1969, and the little Belgian climber, Lucien Van Impe, won the King of the Mountains title six times to equal the record of Federico Balamontes of Spain. Now, Fignon has gone over the top in first place. He can add his name to the list, as now he decides whether he must go for it, and a glance over his shoulder, a flick of the gears, and I guess we know the answer. Ron well, Fignon now, winding his way down towards the valley, heading down to the finish. And this is Javier Merguialdi who's trying to bridge the gap here to Laurent Fignon. He's recognised the danger of the escape by the Frenchman, but he's got a lot of chasing to do now, I think. Laurent Fignon, and now his car alongside him. But now the good news for Fignon, because the gap is hovering. And he's still holding on to a lead by some 30 seconds over the field. But he'll need more than that, I think, to survive. There's a little regroupment on the descent. The field split up, there's some 40 or 50 riders, I would say, no more in that group coming off the mountain. And one of the riders who's missed the split is Jens Hepner. The king of the mountains, the polka-dot jersey being worn on loan at the moment for Claudio Chiapucci. And going through there, leading for Benesto, Julian Gorospe, very valuable rider on the Benesto team. It is a, such a strong team, Benesto. They are strong in just about every department required. Stephen Roach there, having a word with Gerotto. His teammate, 61 here, Andy Hampson from Motorola. Well, they're going to have to make a decision whether they chase or whether they allow Laurent Fignon his moment of glory here. He's not an immediate threat to the overall lead, and they know that, so it looks to me as though Bernesto have been told to limit the escape as best they can. There's those two minutes now, two minutes at 235 kilometers covered. That should be enough for Laurent Fignon. Fignon now clear. They're picking up the riders behind one by one. They go back into the field, but there's no determined chase here. They seem to have become a little bit disorganized on this chase down. No big teams have taken the lead, like Benesto. We'd expect Benesto. RMO know that Fignon immediately will not affect the overall lead. Pascal Lino surviving another day, and perhaps even to take this race now to the base of the Alps at least, as Fignon comes into town, and Laurent Fignon is clear now. This great man, Laurent Fignon, heading towards the finishing line, reliving those great days of 83 and 84. And the crowd appreciating this. This has been a superb ride by Laurent Fignon, and it'll go down as one of the most popular wins of this year's Tour de France, I'm sure of that. He doesn't say too much, but when he does, he says it emphatically. Laurent Fignon, the stage winner, and over the line there. And look at this, only just ahead of this small group by a handful of seconds. And it looks as though it's Per Pedersen leading out this small group. Laurent Dufault, the Helvetia on the left. But Pedersen gets second place, but the man of the day, Laurent Fignon. Dernière petite question, juste en anglais, si tu peux répondre. How did it feel today to win a stage in the Tour de France after so long? It's been since 1989. <laughs> <laughs>
a good choice because uh, it's very long to na since, since 1989. Yes, thank you. So tonight you're a happy man. Yes, thank you. Yes, very much. <laughs> a very tired man as well by the look of it, but Laurent Fignon recovering now to go on to the winner's podium. His victory today, though, some 22 seconds ahead of all of the men who matter in this Tour de France, and therefore the yellow jersey staying with Pascal Lino.